Because that kid said he was just there. <laughs> and he had, what, white clothes on, a hat, and there were fairies involved twice. <laughs> I love it. You know, it's, it's, uh, I also, I was listening, I was listening to our kids perform. I'm telling you what, I'm going to Aubrey's house. If they're, if they're ordering matching Cadillacs to drive around this town, I've heard that. I want to go drive around with Aubrey. Where is she? Yeah, can I have a ride? Yeah. She's not, not even listening to me. <laughs> wow. I, uh, I love this season. I've said it over and over. I, and I know everybody, there's, most of us do. Some of us, you know, don't. Different things happen in life that we don't look at it the same anymore. But I love celebrating. You know, I've always said I don't mind winter at all until Christmas is done and then it can go. But leading up to it, uh, man, if we truly get a hold of what this season is about uh, from Thanksgiving on up, then we're able to grasp what Advent is. You know, if I, if I go over here and I say, uh, kids, well, I don't even know, watch this. One person, which one of you can say what you're thankful for? Okay, right there, Mr. Mason. Thankful for his family. What about you? That's my daughter, Grace. Say something good. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Tosh. Thankful for God. Your parents. Water! Water! <laughs> He's thankful that they were able to have this musical. That we get to share the gift of Jesus. That's right, buddy. A couple more. Your house. Houses are good at this time of year. Thankful for Bob the dog. I don't like Bob the dog. Huh? You're thankful for what? You're an Indian. Okay. <laughs> huh? What? Oh, Bob and Odie. Pets again. One more. Last one. Your cousins. There you go. Oh. No. Okay, everybody yell. What's the thing for right now? Go. <laughs> Get control of yourself, okay? No more. <laughs> All right. So as I sat down, you know, I, I said, you know, we're going to talk about, you're just going to be, we're going to have a lot of noise. Blame it all on uh, Marvin. You're supposed to have control of this group, so get control. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about preparing for Christmas, because that's what Advent is. You know, if you look back through the study of Advent, there are different, you know, churches celebrating at different times in history, uh, whether they're celebrating the, the coming of the, the, the birth of Jesus Christ or the second coming of Jesus. Uh, and there's about three or four other reasons why people celebrate Advent. But it's really become now uh, the preparation, the time of preparation to celebrate uh, the birth of our Savior and to realize, to be joyful in that there is, He is coming back and that we can be prepared for that. And that's what Advent is about. I asked my kids, I said, Gretchen, uh, what is um, Advent? And she looked at me, this is my three-year-old, and said, it's going to snow on Christmas. I said, what is Advent? It's going to snow on Christmas. All right. Nora, what, what is Advent? Or, what, what's, or what's Christmas mean to you? And she said, uh, what? <laughs> snow and presents. That's what Advent was. Grace said winter, Christmas, and then said happiness. <laughs> Ellie giggled and said, I have no idea. <laughs> so, you know, as we prepare, and I'm saying that because, listen, uh, those are my kids. I'm not going to act like my kids are experts on, on Advent. I want them to know what Advent is. Um, I want them to know during this time that it isn't about preparing for a day, preparing for a family gathering, preparing for, you know, the, the best Christmas morning we can or the best Chris family Christmas or office Christmas party. Advent is preparation, I believe, in our hearts 
to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. I wanted to read a scripture from the, because this is the second Sunday of Advent. Advent runs four Sundays and uh, usually starts around the 30th of November, around there with the four Sundays uh, before Christmas. And then on Christmas Eve, we light that fifth candle as we go into the day of celebration. And so I'm going to read the second Sunday scripture from Advent. And this is out of Matthew 1, 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. When we read the story of Jesus, we've heard it thousands of times if you grow up in the church. But out of any story in the Bible, when we, talk, we, we share a lot how we don't want to just be people that read stories. Out of anything in the Bible, this is one that we don't just want to pass over. Because if we believe that He is our King, if we believe that He is our Savior, then celebrating His birth should be the only priority of Christmas. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me through the years of ministry, well, what do you do with your kids with Santa? Or how do you deal with presents? Or all these different things. You know, it's like the Easter Bunny question, this or that. And I've always said, listen, I'm not going to get into a theological argument of whether you should, uh, you know, all these different things that we, we have on Christmas. What I am going to say is that everything needs to be pointed at Him. And if my kids come away from Christmas knowing that the reason why we have all these different traditions that we have, you know, I was reading a book the other day, and their tradition as a family was on Christmas Eve, they ate a huge meal of Chinese food. And the guy said, I don't even know where it comes from. I don't know why we do it. It's just been a tradition in our family. We love it. We get together. And we have it. So there's so many traditions. I bet if we went around this room, we'd have some crazy traditions. But they're a lot of fun. And those traditions aren't bad. Only if they don't detract from who he is and why we're celebrating. If those traditions bring us together as a family, as a body of Christ, to celebrate the birth of our Savior, the birth of the one who redeems us, the one who uh, gives us a life, then those traditions are good and they're part of that celebration. Um, it's when they take away from that that we can get into knowing very quickly that that's not a failure. But Advent literally equals the coming or the arrival of Jesus Christ and His return. As we prepare for celebrating the birth of our Savior, what, what better way to do this as a church than I thought to love others? Because if we're going to say as a church, how do we prepare for Advent? Is it just going, if we, if we bring out the wreath that's in the office that we use for Christmas Eve and we light one candle over the four Sundays of Advent and we always have that and that's special and that's a good moment for our church, is that really Advent? Is that really preparation? Because in my heart, that's not what it's about. The, the candles add to it, and there's, there's some symbolism behind the lighting of the candles that's really special, and we'll talk about that in our candlelight service. But that's not Advent. The wreath, the making of the wreath, is not Advent. Getting out the Christmas tree is not Advent. Presents are not Advent. Those go into and should go into and behind celebrating the birth of our Christ. And so we can say that, you know, you hear all the time in many churches, Jesus is the reason that we celebrate. And, that, and that's great if he is. It's not so great if that's just a cliche saying. If that's just something we say is that we love Jesus and, and that's the reason why we celebrate uh, Christmas, but in my heart, I'm just excited about whatever, you know, as a kid, I'll, I'll tell you right off the bat, what I loved about Christmas was I loved coming home and smelling all the cookies and all the breads and getting ready for all the Christmas parties, all these things. 
I knew in my heart why we celebrated was for Jesus, but I kind of say as a kid, that probably wasn't the most important thing to me. And there are a lot of special things that we can look at. But what is the reason why we celebrate individually? Who is he to us? Because if he is our savior, if he's a king who has come and set us free, then there is reason to celebrate. And it's at the front of our minds and our hearts. Because if we just say that, but then I get in an argument with my family on the holidays. How many of us have had family blowouts on a holiday? Seriously, if we're honest, if we think back to the years, everybody that was honest raised their hands. Um, there's been something. But so we can say, Jesus is the reason. Then I go home and there's this big old argument in the family. How is that, how is that living out? Jesus is the reason we're celebrating. If I say Jesus is the reason, and then I get into a road rage contest with the guy next to me on the interstate because the traffic's bad, and I start honking, he starts honking, and we both say a couple of things and act like something's going to happen, nothing ever happens, and we drive on. Is that is Jesus the reason? If I say Jesus is the reason, but then I spend more money than we actually have on presents just to maintain a status quo, when we could have spent that on others or what he's asking us to do, is he really the reason? If I say he's the reason, but then we fill our calendar with every single party that we can go to and every single event we have, and, and it really does, you hear everybody say, when you say, well, it's crazy right now, so it's Christmas time. Is that the way it should be? Should it be so loaded that all we can think about is, okay, what's next? I got to get out. I got I to gotta beat everybody else so the deal's on that. You know, you know, I say Jesus is the reason, but then I got to rush to the store and I'm in a race with the other person next to me because I want to get that Black Friday deal or that, you know, that Cyber Monday deal or whatever else they come up with to get us to go to the stores. You know, is he the reason in that moment? If I say Jesus is the reason and I fight over those deals, is he the reason? If I say he's the reason, and but then all I do during the month leading up to Christmas is I stress over my home and getting the decorations perfect and, and getting it to look right and making sure we have all the presents we need and, and those have to look perfect and the party has to be perfect so that when my family comes, everything looks perfect. Is that, is he the reason why I'm celebrating? If I say he's the reason and then I go into credit card debt every year over Christmas, because I gotta make sure my kids have exactly what everybody else has or, or what the neighbors might have or what the family thinks they should have. Is he the reason why I'm preparing for Christmas? Because through all of that, if I say that and then I live out that way, I miss out on truly what he wants us to grab hold of. And that is time with my loved ones. Really celebrating that time with them. Honoring real relationship well, I'm not just getting together because it's the thing to do. I'm enjoying, I'm relishing a time living in relationship with the body. Because that's why Christ designed us to live in relationship. If I say all that and I don't do it, then I miss out on experiencing the joy of giving. You know, at this point in time, I've talked about it. I, gifts are great, but most of the time when someone asks me what I want right now, it takes me forever to come up with something because as an adult, like I said, I, if I really want a budget and I go get it. So I, at that time, it's really hard for me to just say, okay, well, that's what I want, really, really want. It's almost fun just to get surprises. But giving, I love. I love seeing people receive a gift. I love surprising them. I purposely just ask, we have a sibling gift exchange every year. And... Uh, uh, my, the sibling that I got was, well, all of our spouses are old, so I got Becca, Justin's wife, and I just asked her what she wanted because I'm not going to get it. I'm actually just going to surprise her. So she thought it was no, I'm joking. But I love seeing people receive gifts and, and just seeing them light up. I love that. So we miss out on actually the giving part of it. We love receiving, right, kids? We like getting presents, but then we love giving it. Yes. Yeah, yes, that was one yes out of 32 kids. <laughs> so if we say that and we don't live it, we miss out on the needs of others who are hurting and might just need a simple word of encouragement or a hug in a time of the year can, that can bring a lot of hurt from past hurts. If I say it and I don't live it, then I, uh, then I can miss out on the true joy throughout this time of celebration. If I say it and I don't live it, I miss out on telling someone else the reason I am celebrating Christmas and not that it's, not that, well, the reason why I call it Christmas and not just a holiday. 
The reason why I'm not afraid to say this is Christmas that I'm celebrating, and it's not just a neutral, lukewarm holiday. I miss out on that time where that other person desperately needs to hear that hope. Amen. If I say it and I don't live it, I truly miss out on celebrating the birth of my Savior. Because I don't want to get to the end of Christmas. And I purposely, we're talking about this now because I don't want us as a body to get to the end of Christmas and go, man, again, I just need time to rest. Wow, I need a vacation now just to get done with Christmas. And we sit back and we go, man, I got to pay off that credit card that I put the presents on. Man, it's just a world because we just went, 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 and we never stopped. And it's just, it just wears you down. And I was in the traffic and I was in all these different things. I want us as a body of Christ to get to the end of Christmas and feel refreshed. I want us to get to the end of Christmas and be full of joy. I want us to get to the end of Christmas where when we go into New Year's resolution time, we, we're full of them because God's been pouring into us because we've truly been preparing our hearts to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. I want us to get to the end of Christmas and my children to know truly what Advent is when I ask them. I want to get to the, Christmas, the end of Christmas and be able to say, God, thank you so much for another year to celebrate the birth of your son, the best gift. Our kids told us that the best gift that could ever be given is the birth of Jesus Christ and to be able to share that with someone else who desperately needs to know there is an answer. I want us to be a church that not just gives off the cliche comments like Jesus is reason, but I want us to be a church that lives it. I talked on Wednesday night how when, uh, let's see, Megan's not in here, I think it was Ellie. When my daughter Ellie was um, younger, when she was just probably well, two years old, um, we would say, do the jabroni, and she would raise her, like, furrow her eyebrows and look at you and, and just bring the one up and growl at you. And it was like, okay, smile, and she'd bring her back with a cheesy smile, and then jabroni, and instantly turn it back and forth, back and forth. And we joke about it, but that word means someone who talks the talk, but doesn't walk the walk. I don't want to talk about Christmas as a, as a body at CLA and talk about all this stuff, and then we go right back into the pattern we've always had for so many years celebrating Christmas. I want us to be a, Chris, a, a body that lives it, a body that doesn't just talk about it, but walks it. I want us to be a body that walks out these doors today and says, God, I don't want to miss a moment that you are telling me to share about the birth of your son. God, I don't want to miss that moment where that person is hurting and dying and all they need is for me to walk up and, and hug them because I can see they're hurting and go, man, I love you, man. What's going on? Let's talk. Or hey, you want to get together. I don't want to miss that moment where someone in the grocery store is just dying in the financial situation they're in, and God prompts my heart to give in to them, and I, I'm, too much, I'm too busy. I'm too much in a hurry, and I miss that moment, or it's too awkward. You know, how will they receive it? See, the beautiful thing about giving a gift, love, a physical gift that we give, it's not about how they'll receive it. It's about where our heart is. Because if God prompts us to do that, then that's between them and God. And so today, I just, I wanted to do just a quick message because I, I know we've got all the kids in here and we have a ton of sugar on the tables out there. We still have a couple numbers that they're going to perform for us before we close. But if we're saying, and our children are telling us this, that, that Jesus is the reason, that he is the most perfect gift that we can give anybody, then I want us to truly ask ourselves on the second Sunday of Advent, God, Help me prepare my heart, number one. Help me to prepare my home, my family, to be about walking it out. Not to be about talking it, but to be about walking it. God, help me prepare my home, my family, myself, to celebrate the birth of your son. And to not get wrapped up in all the things that we get wrapped up in. I was talking to a couple of my male staff members, and I said, it's so easy at this time. I used to do it. I, I would take a a couple different side jobs in ministry and do all these things because I thought, man, i got to be able to give my kids this type of Christmas. And I very rarely take a side job anymore. 
because I've gotten to the point where, and a lot of us realize that that time is much more valuable than the extra money I make on that side job. I want to get to the end of the Christmas, and I would rather my kids have five less presents but understand why we're celebrating and truly have gone, man, it was an awesome time with family. It was an awesome time celebrating. I'm refreshed, I'm strengthened because I have invested that time in digging into the Lord. Um, there was a story I read as I'm closing. It was called the White Envelope Story, and I, I don't know if it was, it said it was a true story, I think. And she said her father, this is the wife telling the story. She said her husband hated Christmas. He didn't hate why we celebrate Christmas, he hated what it had become. And so she just couldn't figure out what to give him. He didn't want a gift. He just said, stop giving me gifts. I don't, I don't want anything. And she noticed that he had always been involved in his son's wrestling as they grew up. And they noticed when they went to one of his son's matches, they played a school, an inner city school that had just gotten a wrestling program going on. And she said they did not have headgear and most of their wrestling shoes, or you could tell, pretty used, hard used. And she said it broke his heart. He talked about it. He said, man, I just wish that one of them could have won because they all lost their matches. And he said they have a ton of potential. They just need coach, they need the right gear, they need the right preparation, and they could be great. And so she <laughs> saw him light up. And so that year she put in an envelope what she had done on the tree. And when it came time to give him a present, because he said, don't give me a present, she gave him this envelope. And inside was a note that said, or a picture I believe too, of the kids that she had gone out and taken that money and bought them all headgear and wrestling shoes. And he just, she said it lit him up and he was so excited about that. And then so every year she would do that. She would put a white envelope on the tree and say, here's what I took that money I would have spent on you. And I went out and did. She said, it might be a, a mission. It might be a missionary. It might be something, a family that I met in a store. But here, here's what happened with that money. And every year he's so excited to open the gift. And everybody else became so excited to see what had happened. He died from cancer, I don't know how many years ago. And she said that first year she was so dealing with grief during the Christmas time. She didn't want to get out the Christmas tree. She didn't want to do everything again. But she did because she knew her kids were going to be coming over to the house. And she did it. And the morning of Christmas she woke up and not only was... Her white envelope there because she had felt in the heart she was still, still supposed to do that. But there were three other white envelopes. And one, every one of her adult kids had put a white envelope on that tree. Uh. And the symbolism of that is, is that we can listen to that story and go, that's really cute. Or we can go, God, and that's what it's about. That's celebrating your love. If I recognize the love you have for me, that even when I mess up, even when I do the dumbest things, even when I turn away from you, you don't turn away from me. You send me the, your son to die for me, to cover me. And you welcome me back. Man, that's an unbelievable gift. And if we're not sharing it, and if we're not living out that love, we're entirely missing the whole point of Christmas. And so today, I wanted to remind us that CLA, I know we're not like that. I know we're a white envelope church. But I also know that each of us can do more. I also know that there's always something else that God wants us to grow in. Always someone else that God wants us to touch. We're not put on this earth to be loners. We're not put on this earth just to have my time. We're put on this earth to love. God, help me see that moment. Help me see that person. And so, as our kids get ready to come up again, I'm going to just leave us in prayer and I'll be back up to close, but... I want to just take this time and I'm going to pray this blessing on this church that, that we are going to become a church of white envelopes. And we come together on Wednesdays and Sundays and in between those and we're going, hey, listen to what happened. On Tuesday, God said, do this and I did it. And then it was telling you what, it, I, I didn't know where the money was going to come from by doing that. And unbelievable blessing happened. Sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with money. It might just be like set a hub. It might just be... Uh, uh, going over and just spending some time with them. I shared that story of that mom and daughter who went over to that elderly, elderly gentleman who lost his wife and built that relationship with him because inside he was dying and wanted to commit suicide. He didn't want to live any longer without his wife, his partner, his best friend. And all he needed was that touch, that relationship with that person. And so today, individually, make that our cry. 
that as we go out and we're preparing for Christmas, let's not get too busy. Let's not wear ourselves out. Let's not spend too much money. Let's not do everything we can to make this right, that right. Let's say, God, I want to celebrate the birth of your son. I want to say Merry Christmas and mean it. I don't want to just say it because it's expected. I want to be living in joy and celebration during this time. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the birth of your son. God, you gave us the gift that all of us would, it, it would be unimaginable to give my child for someone else. But God, you chose to send your son to die on a cross for each of us. And God, we want to honor you by our actions. God, our testimonies need to be the candles that we light. Our lives need to be the candles that we light, God. God, I pray a blessing over CLA. I pray that you begin to share with each of us uh, what we need to do this season to celebrate God. The people we need to speak to, the people we need to lift up, the people we need to pray for, God. The loved ones that desperately need the answer that is you. And so, God, today, I, we just want to honor you with the gift of our worship. God, we want to honor you with the gift of our love. That, that, that gift that you desire more than anything is just our love in return. And so, Father, thank you. Thank you so much for loving us enough to send your Son. Father, we worship you. In your heavenly name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, listen to the kids again. There.